guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I'm going to be doing a homeschool with me video. This time we're going to be doing a history lesson together. If you are new to my channel, my kids right now range all of the grades from elementary school all the way up to high school. And so I wanted to show you guys how we utilize the Good and the Beautiful's history curriculum in our homeschool so that way I am able to teach history across the board to all four of my kids at one time. I do want to thank I do want to thank the Good and the Beautiful for partnering with me on today's video. As you guys can see behind me, I have my morning cart and my dining room table is here. We are downstairs in my home. This is where we start our homeschool every day. I know so many of you guys regularly watch my homeschooling videos, so you're well aware of that, but just in case you're coming across this video and you're not a regular viewer, you may not know that. So we do half of our school day down here at the table, family style together, and there's a range of subjects that I teach all of my kids together as a group. I'll talk about why here in a second. And then when it's time for everyone to work on their level and grade level specific work, we go upstairs and everyone has their individual course books and different things that they use for that. Um, but for the group subjects, this area of homeschooling is one that when I very first started homeschooling and was researching homeschooling about eight, nine years ago, I could not wrap my head around how I could possibly teach history or uh, you know, a time period in history to kids that were not in the same grade. That was just a foreign idea to me that, I mean, it didn't even make any logical sense to me. And so I sympathize and understand where a lot of you guys are coming from when you're new to homeschooling, that cannot make any sense. And really what it boils down to is that we've just been programmed to believe that education and learning has to happen in a certain, you know, way, very a boxed in way. And it really is just because of the public school model that we believe that. There's no reason why kids ranging ages can't learn the same material and take away different things from it. But when I was first starting to homeschool, I did not understand that concept. And so I wanted to make this video to hopefully encourage you guys um, in this area. You know, I equate it to something of the like of if you're taking a class for your your employer you may not all be the same exact age you may range from some in your 20s some in your 40s some in your 50s and you're all capable of learning and taking away things from the class and that really is no different with kids other than the fact that you know they're still developing and learning things but what when people hear information we all take different things away from it and so that is a concept that i could not wrap my head around until i started actually seeing it myself so the good and the beautiful's history if you're not familiar is four years long and each year moves through four different time periods in history. I love that. I started out my homeschooling journey using history curriculum that stayed on one time period for the whole year. That was not working well for anyone in my house. Um, so we much prefer how the good and the beautiful moves through those four different time periods. I have used year one all the way up to this year we are using year four and I want to address a common question that I get asked is am I going to go back to year one next year since we've completed all four of the years? Now, I usually stay away from saying yes or no to things until I fully made a decision, but I do think that we will be going back to year one history, and here's why. When I did year one history, my oldest daughter was in the third or fourth grade. I cannot rem fourth grade. Yes, fourth grade. She is now in the ninth grade next year will be in the 10th grade. So a 10th grade student is going to pull and understand things much differently than a fourth grader. And that is the beauty of being able to cycle back through the same materials. Also, the student explorers, which I'll show you guys here in a second, which are the handouts, basically that your kids fill out on some of their history lessons, they are broken down and done per grade level. So when she was in fourth grade, she was using an entirely different handout than she'll be using in the 10th grade. And then lastly, 
The Good and the Beautiful does have recommended read alouds that correlate with the history. Obviously, I wouldn't read the same book again. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but if you choose all different books, then that's gonna basically be like a whole different thing. So I do think we will go back to year one and I'm, I, I think that's the route we're gonna go. You know, I might change my mind or I might add something or, you know, I'm not real sure 100% because that'll be next year. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But that's what I'm thinking for now. And the last thing I wanted to tell you guys in this little intro before we, before I just start into my school day and show, show you guys a history lesson um, <clears throat> is when my daughter was getting ready to enter into high school, I found myself, even as a seasoned homeschooling mom, really, really, really struggling with some doubts. Uh, they were different doubts than they, than I had at the beginning of my homeschooling journey, but they were doubts nonetheless. And one of the things that I really doubted was, you know, what I should do when it comes to her subjects should she just basically be on an island by herself doing everything that is you know on her own a history course on her own a science course on her own should she just basically do her own thing while i still work with my other three who are not in high school and that was from the pressure of feeling like I had to reinvent the whole wheel, so to speak, in my homeschool for high school. Now, there obviously are things that your high school student does need to learn, and so, you know, there are some necessary changes and tweaks. But what I do want to encourage you guys on, if you have been homeschooling for a while, especially if you've been homeschooling for a while, but even if you are brand new to homeschooling, you have spent years <laughs> years creating family culture and togetherness in your homeschool through read alouds, through Bible study together, through activities, through memories surrounding the holidays, through fun learning experiences, through all of those things. When your child reaches high school age, after you've cultivated that in your homeschool and in your family, do not like let all of that go out of pressure that you need to like do something entirely different because now you're in high school or your child's in high school that would be so sad and that would be such like i don't know it would hurt my heart and i know it would hurt hers so as i approached the high school year this year like talking you know about a year ago when i was contemplating everything I was really feeling sad. And what I realized was the sadness was coming from a feeling of she wasn't going to really be a part of my homeschool anymore. And that's when I knew that I needed to keep some family style subjects in my homeschool because I enjoy teaching her. I enjoy having all of my kids around the table learning together. And that to me is one of the most important things of homeschooling. And I also think it's critical through the teenage years to keep your hearts tethered together as mom and daughter or dad and daughter or son and vice versa. So I wanna encourage you guys, if you have a child child who is older or who is moving into high school in the coming years. Do not abandon that family togetherness out of pressure or fear that you need to like do more. Figure out a way to maintain those connections and touch points in your homeschool that are really valuable and then also you can find a way to make sure that they are being challenged in all of the right areas. So I wanted to encourage you guys with that. So that is really the reason why we have stuck with the good and the beautiful history and why I see myself continuing on with it because that is a subject that I get to teach all of my kids together. And it is, you know, it's just one of those things in our homeschool that I know we're always gonna remember. We're gonna remember playing all of the games. We're gonna remember playing Houses of History, which is the game that goes with year four. And it's really important to me. So that's why we do some family subjects and history is one of them. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So now we are going to jump into the history lesson and I 
I will show you guys how we do history from high school all the way down to elementary school. And I did not choose a special lesson. I could have gone through the course book and found one that had a bunch of activities, but I didn't do that. I just plopped on my calendar film history video. And so whatever lesson we were on for the day is what I'm gonna show you guys. And so, so I hope you here we are, lesson 18 in history year four. We have just moved into the second unit of this year, which is on the reformation in the history of the Bible. So this is history year four course book. Um, lesson 18, like I said. Now, what I'm gonna show you guys real quick so that you can get a better picture are the student explorers. Every lesson does not contain uh, an indication to do an activity from the student explorer, but you'll see here um, that I have four folders, so one for each of my kids. Uh, this one here is history year four, grades seven through nine, so this is my oldest son's, and Sometimes the sheet is the same for all of them, but oftentimes it's not. So it looks like this is the one for lesson 18 on John Wycliffe. And um, so that one is there. Let's see what we have in my youngest daughters. So that is the student explorer for grade seven through nine. Um, this one is my daughters for grades four through six. Um, so let's see, she didn't move her last one over to the completed side. So it does look like this lesson is the same one where they're copying a quote from him, but I'll show you guys that uh, they're not always the same. So let's see what the next one is, if I can get it. Um, they're, they're creating a timeline this year, so that looks like it'll be the same. Um, here's a quote from Martin Luther. But we can go back and you can, I'll pull out an example of one that is not the same. They're not always the same. Sometimes they are totally different. And oftentimes the ones for the older kids for grades seven through nine, uh, they come with, um, you know, a reading handout on the specific person or time period where they're reading more about it. I'll show you an example of that if I can get it. So here's one for lesson 36 where they're reading this um, and they're supposed to take notes in their history notebook about this individual, um, so like bullet point notes on William Lloyd Garrison. It's, it's about five pages long, so this is a specific person. So this is lesson 36 and then we can compare over here in grade four through six, let's find lesson 36 and we'll be able to see um, if there's a difference there. So there might not even be, yeah. So they don't even have one for that for that day. So there are differences in the student explorers, um, but that's not the only way that it is uh, taught across the grade levels, but I just wanted to show you guys those differences. There are sometimes they're uh, the same and sometimes they're not, it just depends. So I follow the lesson exactly as it's worded here and um, the only thing that you're not gonna see here is the unit two read aloud. I alternate history read alouds with uh, just other read alouds in my homeschool because I'm only capable of reading so many books. And so for unit three, we're gonna be doing a history read aloud, but I did not schedule one for unit two. Uh, so of course, even if they have it here, you can choose to do it or not. We are reading another book at this time, so I'm not reading the history book. So we will just go through follow the lesson, listen to our audio recording, which are, is probably one of my kids' favorite parts about doing history, and learn about John Wycliffe. Okay, this one is yours. So you guys can take out lesson 18, and just, this one's kind of, can you pass it to her? This uh, lesson 18 should go on the top of the folder, but we're not gonna do it until we get through the lesson. So just set it on top, take it out. Oh, why you Oh, I get to go. Did you say that? It's because it wasn't full. Oh, you weren't done with it? Okay, so today, don't go through all of them. Just take out lesson 18. Oh, I only have one Yeah. 
So today, as you guys can tell, we are doing a lesson on someone named John Wycliffe. And so now that we have learned the history behind the Inquisition and the Reformation, we get to start learning about some amazing heroes of the Reformation. So this picture here is a picture of John Wycliffe, and he was a hero during this time period. We're going to learn a little bit about him. This picture that I have here for you guys is um, obviously a church, and it says St. Mary's at Letterworth, England. So this was the church where John Wycliffe taught. And this is an actual photograph. Do you see the gravestones in the corner? Oh yeah, there is a graveyard there. So this is where he taught. So this church is very, very old in England, and he taught there. So we're going to start off by listening to who? Kate and Jack. Kate and Jack, our favorite history friends. Landon, stop doing that. And um, and then I'll, I'm going to ask you guys some questions after we listen to it. So make sure that you're listening closely. sleeping in the camper up in the mountains. Their beds were warm and comfortable. A quick glance out the window showed that it was still dark outside. Jack's mind began racing now. What was Finn doing waking them up? Was there a bear? There were definitely bears living in the area. All right. So now we're going to go through our review questions here. So the first one I have is for Olivia. I'm going to call on you guys. So please don't scream it out. Okay. Where did John Wycliffe live and preach the gospel? Letterworth, England. Good. What else besides preaching did he do to spread the gospel, Landon? Um, he went around England and preached good so he went around what else did he do that had to do with the bible he wrote many articles he wrote a lot of yeah, articles he, across. he wrote the bible he translated it into what language english. english good because prior to that did people have access to reading their own bible no, no. so they were reliant on what the priest and what the priest did whatever they said or did, right? Yeah. Good. Wrong. Wrong. So, he, besides preaching, he trained others on how to preach, he translated the Bible into English, and he contended against the falsehoods that were being taught. All right, Caleb, how would you feel if you were charged and taken to court many times for preaching the gospel? Would you be brave enough to continue? Um... I'd definitely be pretty scared, but I think I would continue. So how would you feel if you were charged and taken to court multiple times for sharing the gospel? I would be mad if Wilbur did it. You would be mad? What do you think about that question? Um, I feel very misunderstood. Misunderstood. I would be very bothered. What's your problem? Do you think you would be brave enough to continue? I mean, we all know that the right answer is yes. I probably doubt. But it would be scary, wouldn't it? I mean, we know the right answer is yes. Nothing should stop us from, from spreading the gospel. But if you're facing imprisonment for doing so, it might be a little scarier to continue. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. We are blessed to be able to read about John Wycliffe's later life, but we don't know about his early years. What can you do to ensure that there is a record of your life for others to read someday? By writing it down. Write some things down. Um, albums. Photo albums. 
or picture books. That's why I make all those picture books for you guys. And I know you love looking back on them. Some other things are um, like a journal or a diary. Those are funny to, to go back and read yeah. the things yeah, you wrote yeah. down. Yep, Drawing, offensive. sometimes offensive if you wrote something in the heat of the moment. <laughs> um, what about what I do on making videos? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll be able to, we still, it's fun to go back and look and see when you were little, little and you, you were tracing the letter D and you were so proud of yourself. Yeah, anyway. Or G, whatever G. it was. G. <laughs> okay, so. I want each of you to share one of these with me. So we're just gonna go around the table. So who are some people that we have learned about in this course or year one, year two, or year three that you wish had written books about their own lives expressing their own thoughts and feelings? So Caleb, name someone that we've learned about in history over the years that you wish would have written a more detailed book on their thoughts or feelings. Um, I would like to look into the mind of Genghis Khan. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. He's so brutal. Yeah, why are you the way you are? Okay, because he was pretty evil. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I want to see about Muhammad. Muhammad? Yeah. What would you want to know about? Well, I'd just like to see his way of thinking. Okay. Point out his flaws. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander the Great, why? Because I want to know all his thoughts and his strategies. Normal speaking. His strategies and thoughts. What about you? Anybody from history that you wish you could read more about their thoughts or feelings? Esther. Esther from the Bible? Like how did she, what? What do you want to know yeah. about her? Queen. Oh, the Queen Esther, yeah. She, that's who I'm talking about. How she ruled. How she ruled. Cool. Okay, so we have some squares here that we're going to read some more, a few more facts about John Wycliffe, but you need to move down so that we can glue them onto the, um, onto the page here. So what was his nickname again? The Morning Star of. Pictures here, three different ones. Um, with John Wycliffe Morning Star of the Reformation. So you're going to read the fact on the card that I passed out to you, and then we're going to glue it next to the corresponding image. Okay? So we'll start with you. Read your fact. Okay. Despite great persecution from the Roman Catholic Church and many trials in court, Wycliffe was able to preach up until three days before his death. He was loved by many and despised by many. So where do you think that one goes? All right here, here. I would say so. Yeah, it does. It's okay. Okay, um, John Wycliffe labored and preached in Lutterworth, England. He preached with clearness, faithfulness, and power. <gasps> right there. Number one. Good. So glue it on. As a lollards or poor priest to preach the gospel all over the country. These priests were important because the church required years of education and often sponsorship to become a priest. Okay, kind of you guys know anything about John Wycliffe I before his today? I heard his name, but I don't know. I knew his name, but I didn't know anything you about him. You knew nothing? Him. Caleb, can you read the quote that's on the top of your uh, student explorer sheet? Yep. We are under God's power. We can do nothing but by the power of God. Good. So you guys are going to copy that quote down that he said in cursive onto your um, sheet and then color in your uh, picture there on the bottom, okay? So like I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't wait to choose a history lesson that had like a ton of activities. I just picked whatever day. So you guys can see we did the review activity. Now they're working on their student explorers. And then I already told you that we are not doing a read aloud for this unit um, because we are reading some other 
uh, books at this time. So that is the completion of lesson 18. There, These were the facts there. So we are on to lesson 19. And then if you wanted to see a little close up, uh, I love this book of pictures, maps, and images. So I love that they have this included. And then the game that goes with the uh, year four history course is this game called History Houses. And this is a super fun game, and it is so awesome for uh, older kids as well. So basically, it's, it's like a trivia game. I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but I'm just going to show you guys that um, on each card, there's a easier question and a more difficult question. And I would go out on a limb here and say that most adults don't know the answers to all of the difficult questions on here. So this is a really fun game that spans across the ages. And my kids really, really like it. Um, and it's really great for reviewing all of the facts that they have learned. Um, basically, you try to create each history house and then the questions pertain to that time period. So that's the game that comes with year four and we have really been loving that. it for this video I hope you guys enjoy doing a history lesson with us as well as hearing why and how we teach history family style in our homeschool if you have any questions for me post them down below and I will be sure to get back to you I will have the good and the beautiful linked down in the description box as always so it's super easy for you guys to head over there I hope you enjoyed today's video give me a thumbs up if you did it's a free way to support my channel and I will see you all in my next one really soon bye guys